when I was 15 or so, something in me was determined not to accept authoritarian, mindless rules and regulations. Pretty much all the adults I encountered, they were really a bloody nuisance, and so the idea of a world without adults was very attractive to me. My name is John Marsden and I write books and I run a couple of schools in Victoria. Teenagers, probably all through history, have been demonised in so many different ways by the media and by adults. They are unemployable, they're illiterate, they're drug addicted and so on and so on. And so I wanted to write a book that would show teenagers in a different light and also a book that teenagers would read and start to think, gee, how would I go in a situation like that? The Tomorrow series is about a hypothetical war where Australia gets invaded, but a group of young people is not included in the roundup. They are able to wage a sort of guerrilla war against the invaders. The characters in the book, they're not superheroes, they have plenty of weaknesses, but I wanted teenagers who read the book to realise that having weaknesses is not the end of everything. It doesn't mean that you have no strengths. Sometimes when I pick up one of my books in the school library, it will fall open at a page where there's something sexual happening. So that's fine. When I was a teenager, I was very interested in books that had scenes like that, and I would reread those scenes. And uh, my books would fall open at those pages too, I imagine. One of the problems with the way sex is taught in schools is that it's often taught by the science teachers and it's presented in a very scientific way with lots of diagrams and, uh, and data. Sex is about far more than that. It's about relationships, it's about feelings. It's something that should be celebrated, not feared or scorned or despised. The books have acknowledged that by the way that uh, the characters connect with each other. And I mean connect with each other metaphorically more than literally. I think I've got uh, nine filing cabinets all together. About half of those are full of letters. Maybe I'm just a hoarder by nature and that's why I hang on to all the correspondence I've had over the years, but um, I think it's more than that. There's so many letters that are full of rich and unique comments and thoughts that I can't bring myself to throw them away because they seem too valuable. They seem like gold. I never use the word fan because I think it's degrading and contemptuous. These are letters from people who read books with an intensity, which I have, and uh, the books can be quite a lifeline. Leaving a school where I taught for nine years, the principal said to me, you take young people's issues seriously and you show them a lot of respect. And I was pretty moved by that because um, I think that's what I didn't experience when I was a young person. I have never felt safe in my childhood or adolescent years and that was as true at home as it was at school. I got in endless trouble. I challenged authority and defied every rule and regulation and uh, spent an awful lot of time being either caned or lectured. I dated back to a geometry lesson in year seven at the start of the year where I didn't understand the work and I think I lost confidence from that moment on. I went to university because it was just the expected thing to do. When I got there I found it all alienating and uh, so huge that I couldn't connect with anything or anyone. I was working as a cleaner and uh, I was getting no support or help from anyone and was seriously contemplating bringing it all to an end. I knew some people had tried psychiatry and I didn't believe in it, I didn't have faith in it, but I thought I should at least give it a go and then if it doesn't work then I haven't lost anything because I'll kill myself anyway. There was no instant cure from being in a psych hospital. I didn't come out of there beaming with happiness and joy. It was another about eight years before I finally decided to try teaching as a career. Oh, I love the smell of mint. And you know, if you scratch it or squash it, it smells even stronger. Yeah, put it right up to your nose. All right, beautiful. It's amazing how every leaf is different. All through my teenage years and my adult years, I kept wondering what a good school would look like and how you could make a school good. It did happen that I sold enough books to be in a position where I could finance my own school. And so I took a deep breath and uh, counted to about 3,000 and went ahead and did it. 
Gandalf is pretty much the opposite of the school I went to. Its secret motto was take risks, although I often say take care as well just to kind of satisfy cautious people. But really it's about being adventurous. It's very important that young people get their hands dirty, looking after the farm animals, having adventures and meeting new people and having new experiences. That's all a very important part of life here. The impact I had on kids as an author was always kind of distant. It's very different to the impact that comes when you're dealing with someone physically here and now in the office, showing you something they're proud of. They both mean a lot to me. I'm very much driven by the fact that my own early years were so awful. I have every sympathy with young people who are in similar predicaments. The Tomorrow series, I hope, is giving young people the message that they are capable of great things. It was fun writing the car chases and blowing up different bridges, but it's really about people's inner landscapes and how they're feeling and how they're coping with something that's gone horribly wrong and how they're trying to find a way forward. Adolescence is the time when we're starting to write the script for our adult lives and we kind of pay our adolescents to be rebellious and uh, to question and to challenge and even to defy us and yet at the same time we complain bitterly when they do but that's their job and uh, we should welcome it.